I was hit by a meteorite. It could have happened to anyone, anyone in the whole world, but out of some two billion people, it happened to me. I was dozing on the couch in our living room, not fully asleep and not fully awake either. I think it was about a quarter to one in the afternoon. Suddenly the whole house was filled with the awesome sound of one terrible crash. I can't even describe the sound. It was like someone bombing Silicaga, like the whole house just exploded. At a time like that, you don't really think, you just sort of feel, and I felt something awful, something terrifying had just happened. I jumped up, stunned, and then I heard another noise. It was then that I felt the pain flaming through my left hand and alongside my hip. An object had fallen from the quilt, and the second noise I heard was it striking the floor. I stared down at the thing that had just exploded into my life. It wasn't frightening in itself, it was just a rock, not even a very large one, about the size of a cantaloupe. I stooped down and tried to lift it with one hand. I couldn't. The meteorite was warm and heavy, heavier than lead or anything else I had ever seen. It was warm too, like someone had been roasting it. I stood up then, watery-legged, and a blind kind of terror seized me and I screamed. My mother came running and found me weak-kneed and bewildered, staring at the rock and clutching my left hand, which had swollen to twice its normal size. I fell into her arms and the two of us just stood speechless, surveying the weird scene in front of us. It was really weird. The rock had come straight down from the sky, straight through the roof, and ripped a big, ugly hole in the ceiling. It had smashed the radio and bounced onto the couch and hit my hand and hip. Look at your hand, my mother shouted. It was getting worse by the minute and the sight of it made me feel faint. We decided we needed help, so I managed to phone the police. Looks like a meteorite, Mrs. Hodges, one of the policemen said when he arrived, and he explained that all the police departments throughout the country were under orders to turn over to the Air Force any object that fell from the skies. I wasn't exactly sure what a meteorite was. I had always pictured them as huge things, not like some ordinary sized stone of the garden variety, but the police weren't sure, and they took it away with them, first taking me to the doctor for some x-rays of my hand and hip. I felt better after a while, especially since the doctor was sure I hadn't broken any bones. When I got home, the side of the house where we lived was almost shocking. The whole sidewalk and lawn were covered with people. I was told that never in the history of the world has anyone been hit by a meteorite. Our house was like a railroad depot all through that first night and on to the next day. It continued into the next night, becoming more of a mob scene each hour. It was too much for me. All the people, the noise, the excitement, and the pain. My hand and hip were worse now, so they took me to the hospital in a state of shock. In the hospital, I had peace and quiet for the first time since that little star, that tiny meteorite, came crashing into my life. Mm -hmm.